Hello there, Sam Moser here. This is the fifth video in my van build series, and this one's gonna be all about the composition and construction of the floor of the van. Let's go. The floor is composed of the following layers. Starting from the bottom, we have plywood strips, an underlayment, rigid foam insulation, plywood, and finally vinyl sheet flooring. So at the bottom there are plywood strips whose purpose is to create a surface that is about level with the ribs in the floor. Next, I laid down a 3-in-1 underlayment. According to the product description, this provides some cushioning, sound absorption, and provides a film barrier against thermal and moisture issues. In retrospect, I don't think this was necessary, and I'd probably skip it on a future build. Next is rigid foam insulation. I used one half inch XPS. Some people don't think it's worthwhile to insulate the floor because even with really thick insulation, the floor will probably remain one of the colder surfaces in the van. I have to believe that having some insulation in the floor will help with retaining heat in the van when it's cold out. So I added half inch XPS. The half inch XPS has an R value of R3 and the plywood above it of R0.63. So overall, this isn't a lot but better than nothing. If you want a higher R value in the floor, it's easy to build it with even thicker rigid foam, but keep in mind as the floor gets thicker, the overall headroom in the van gets reduced. Above that, I laid half inch plywood as the subfloor. This gives the floor a solid base, as well as provides a substrate which other things can be anchored into with screws. For the flooring material, I used vinyl sheet flooring. It is sold in a 12 foot wide sheet that can be cut to any length. This means you can get a single continuous sheet that covers the entire floor and there are no intermediate seams where water can potentially seep through to the subfloor. Just be sure the perimeters are sealed up well. This material is also pretty durable, easy to clean, and comes in a variety of styles. Here is the full material list. You can also find it in the video description along with links for the items. Now for the construction. The first thing I did was cut the foam insulation to the shape of the floor. I made my own template out of cardboard, but if your van comes with a floor mat, you can use that as the template. I find the easiest way to cut rigid foam insulation is to score a line with a utility knife and then snap it along that line. This doesn't always leave a perfect edge, but it's better than cutting it with any type of saw, which creates tons of harmful foam dust. After making sure the foam insulation fit, I traced out the shape of the foam onto the plywood and cut it to the same shape using the jigsaw. I also used the foam to cut the sheet vinyl flooring and underlayment roughly to shape. I left the vinyl oversized at this point as I would cut the edges to the exact fit as I was installing it in the van. Next, I cut and laid out the plywood strips. At this point, I was just figuring out a good placement for them, but not adhesiving them down yet. I also needed to adjust for this big dent in the floor near the sliding door step. I'll play this old clip to explain that. Right here, the floor is extremely unlevel. It drip, it slopes down. And I made one attempt to try to kind of like pop it back up from underneath, but that doesn't, wasn't gonna work. So this is what I've come up with instead. So I made this board here. Let me show you the side profile of it. And so this piece will rest along the floor of the, the step area right here. Um, I added plus nuts at three points along this that this will bolt into. And then the edges of it and this edge here rest on the bit of the floor. And, and I have this such that it's the height of these other boards once they're adhesive down. And then that'll give a really solid base that's level to build the floor on, um, ignoring the uneven metal underneath. Next, I used marine adhesive to adhere the plywood strips to the floor. To hold the boards down until the adhesive cured, I found some items to place on top of them. I mainly used cinder blocks and some tubs of old paint. At first, I placed these directly on the strips, but then I pulled these off and laid a piece of the subfloor on top 
and then heavy items on that to distribute the pressure more evenly across all of them. I adhered the strips the same way on the rest of the floor. Also, for best adhesion, be sure to clean the floor first. I would sweep off any debris and then give it a wipe down with some simple green and a rag. I installed the strips in the middle section of the floor before the front section finished curing, so I had to get more creative finding heavy items to sit on top. On top of the strips, I added an underlayment. I had to use two strips. I just left them full width and overlapping in the center. This layer was so thin and squishy, it didn't seem to matter if it was slightly thicker in the center. I stapled the underlayment down to the wood strips to hold it in place. Next, I laid the foam insulation and used some 3M high strength spray adhesive in between the underlayment and the spray foam. The spray adhesive probably wasn't necessary here. The original thinking was that it would help prevent any movement between the two layers, which might cause squeaking. But looking back at it, by the time all the layers of the floor were added and secured, I don't think it's possible for there to be any movement between these two layers. After this, I laid down the plywood subfloor. Before doing this though, I had marked out where the plywood strips were located and pre-drilled holes for the screws. I used foam board adhesive between the foam board and the plywood. At this point of the installation, I ran into a problem. My plan had been to quickly screw down the plywood and this would hold everything down while the adhesive cured, but the screws I bought ended up being too short to bite into the plywood strips. So instead, I sat heavy items on top again, making sure weight was even across the seams so that they were level. Later, once I had the proper screws, I went back and added all the screws. Another thing to note, I staggered where the seams were between the plywood and the foam board. I thought this would help better support the edges of the plywood, but as I'll mention later, I should have done more to connect the adjacent edges of the plywood sheets. I waited to cut out the doorstep section until the foam and plywood were installed. This allowed me to make sure the edge of the subfloor was flush to the vertical board I had installed to support the edge of the floor by the doorstep. At this point, I gave the floor a quick sand as there was some splintering and rough edges near the screw holes. Then, I taped off the walls around the edges before filling in the gap around the edge with spray foam. While waiting for the foam to cure, I added patch and level to fill in the screw holes in the floor. I also added some along the seams. The patch and level went on pretty smooth, but if needed, it can be sanded once it dries. Now that the foam around the edges was cured, I cut the excess flush with the top of the plywood and peeled off the masking tape I had applied. The masking tape helped protect the wall when I was cutting off the excess foam. After this, I was ready to install the final layer, the sheet vinyl flooring. I had to wait for the weather to cooperate as the vinyl adhesive specified that it needed to be above 65 degrees Fahrenheit during installation. Luckily, Central Texas doesn't stay cold for long. I spread the adhesive with a trowel with 1 16th inch U notches. I installed the vinyl in two sections, first the front half and then the back half. Once the adhesive is spread, you lay the flooring back over it and smooth it out and press it flat. I used a rolling pin for this. All of this was then repeated for the back half. One quart of the adhesive covers about 42 square feet, so I bought two quarts worth, but had a good bit of the second quart still left at the end. The flooring will move and stretch a little as you roll it out and smooth it down. This is why I waited until this point to cut the edges to the exact shape of the floor. I used a utility knife to cut it. I didn't worry about getting the edges perfect as I'd be sealing up the edges with silicone caulk at the end. Be careful what you get the sheet vinyl adhesive on. It is super sticky and very hard to clean off any clothes or tools you get it on. And here's how everything looked at this point. It was pretty exciting to see the van with flooring. The final step was to add some trim around the edges. I used staircase trim along with some weather stripping meant for the bottom of a garage door to trim and close up the exposed edges. That was it for the install, but I want to give a few thoughts on how it worked out. The flooring material itself I like. It's durable and it's been holding up pretty well. 
The only place it's been showing wear is right under the casters on the fridge platform, which repeatedly gets rolled in and out. And the issue there really isn't so much the flooring as it is the casters I chose. And my plan is actually to replace those and put the fridge on drawer slides instead. And that'll be a better solution. As you saw, I installed the flooring very early in the build. And the positive thing about doing this is that you can have that continuous sheet of flooring under everything else in the van. The downside to this is during the rest of the build, you have to be really careful not to spill things on it and get the floor dirty. And there was a few spots where I got a few drips of glue on it, but overall it wasn't too bad and nothing major. The one thing I would do differently next time I build a floor like this is to make sure the edges of the plywood subfloor are locked together. There is one spot on the floor where I can step and feel that the floor gives a little bit and you can feel a little lip kind of between the two sheets of the plywood right there. The edges could have been connected by cutting a tongue and groove or other joinery or by using some sort of hardware like a, a plywood edge clip. Other than this one spot though, the floor feels pretty solid overall. Some people choose to bolt the subfloor down through the sheet metal floor of the van. And if you want to make sure that it's built really solid, then that probably isn't a bad idea. But I wasn't sure it was worth all the extra holes you have to put in the floor to do that. Another thing you might have noticed is that I didn't add any sound deadening to the floor, whereas I did on the larger, flatter areas of the walls and ceiling of the van. And my thinking there was that the floor is already so ribbed and rigid that it really isn't going to vibrate and resonate sound like those larger, flatter sections of the walls and ceiling will. So I'm not sure how much of a difference it would have made, but that's why I chose not to add any sound deadening to the floor. Well, that's it for this one. As always, thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.